this because it's got all the Malincam stuff on it. But I use these reusable wire ties. So there's sort of two different places where wires come out of this harness here. Um, this is coming out. One is near the mount. So there's your power and this is going to go to the handset. Or again, if I had the cable that bypassed the handset, it would go directly in where the handset normally plugs in. Okay, so I'm just going to... down okay and besides uh, reusable wire ties another option is velcro straps Oh, and I forgot, it's going to be a little, um, what I've done with my, my a AC power or DC power for the cameras is, you know, this is a inexpensive, I think they're like $13 on Amazon, uh, AC adapter for Canon. And, uh, what I've done is just sacrificed one of these by putting, uh, cutting it and putting DC uh, connectors in the wire and that way I can connect it to my wiring harness here so I'm going to pop the battery out there's a couple reasons why you want to use an AC adapter or a you know constant power supply versus a battery um, talk and think at the same time here. One is, of course, that that should be on this side. Yep. Okay. One reason is so that your power doesn't die in the middle of your, your astrophotography session, but there's another reason as well, is that these things, when they discharge, they get hot. And we want to, you know, ideally your camera would be cooled or, you know, at or below 32 degrees Fahrenheit or something because the colder the sensor the less thermal noise there is in your in your images um, so any source of heat uh, we want to eliminate so that's another reason to to get rid of that so let's hook these guys up here so this is currently set up for the Malin cam so I had intended to have two different size DC connectors for the power supply for the Malin cam, which is 12 volts. It says 12 volts. And the one for the Canon, which is 7.5 volts, but they ended up being the same so now I just have to be very careful I don't know what would happen if you plug the 12 volts into the cannon but probably nothing good so that's why this one's labeled 12 volts and I always double check this guy is from a company called tethered 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 tools I think it is and it's for shooting tethered meaning with a cable attached to photography and this is part of their jerk stopper line so they have little strain reliefs here that keep the cables from getting pulled out I'll show you another one when we get to the laptop and then I 
run this in and out of here a couple times to make sure it's no corrosion. Um, I also have buried in one of these boxes some contact cleaner that I use when things don't connect. Okay, so we've connected the camera data and power and we can connect the auto guiding camera. Now, you'll notice I don't have what's called an ST4 cable. I don't have a cable going from here to the mount and that's because I'm doing what's called ASCOM pulse guiding. So I'm controlling the auto guiding through this USB data cable versus this um, and the mount through its serial connection uh, versus the separate cable and there's a couple advantages to that. Um, it's said to be more accurate in how it can adjust the, the pulses that it sends and also it means that PHD2 is going to know where in the sky your mount is pointing and so that helps it do a better calibration and, and operate in general. So there's a bunch of stuff hanging off here so normally I would have this very tight and neat and clean. Um, I'm not going to do that right now in the interest of time. Again this, this uh, wiring harness is meant to have another video camera right here and a bunch of stuff so I'm not going to worry about that at the moment. So this is, uh, I guess we can go ahead and do one more connection here. We're going to need, gonna need this handset. Again, because I don't, on this rig, I don't have the cable that bypasses the handset. So that goes in there. And then this is from my wiring harness. M for mount. That goes right there. And when we get closer to running this, one downside of this is you have to remember to set this the, the handset to PC remote. If you don't do that, nothing's gonna <laughs> nothing's gonna work. We will dress this up just a little bit here. Alright. So I guess weight wise we can do one more thing here we can put a if we're going to use a uh, dew shield we can put that on okay so that's all the gear that we're going to use so now we can start balancing things on the mount so we're going to go ahead and lay this down. Now I'm, I'm destroying the, the home position, so we'll have to do that step again. Um, let me put it this way. So lay that flat. And let's see, I guess first we can adjust. We can adjust the balance this way in RA. Now, because this is really a little too heavy for this mount, all this gear, um, it's binding a little bit, so it's not it's not really uh, free floating, which makes it a little hard to balance. But just for example, let's be silly about it. You know, here, obviously, that's out of balance, right? So. So just try to get it as balanced as you can. In a, in a perfect world, um, it should be, I believe it's a little east heavy and it, and it may depend on, you know, which side of the meridian you're on, but um, in general I just try to balance it as close as I can. I'm going to go a little bit more this way. 
have it a little out of balance, it means that it's less likely to, if you have any hysteresis or jitter in your setup, it's less likely to bounce because it's always going to be pushing on, on one side. Okay, so let's lay that flat. Close the, lock down the RA, and then we're gonna loosen the deck. Okay, so that's a little back end heavy. That's one of the issues with astrophotography is you've always got all this heavy camera stuff down here, and it always tends to be back heavy, and you end up sliding almost out of your saddle here. That's one reason why on this rig, I've put my auto guider as far forward as I can. And sometimes people even have weights and stuff up here. So I'm going to slide this forward carefully, loosening it only enough to where I can move it. And not drop your scope and camera and everything. See, again, this mount is not, uh, it's too much weight for the mount, so it's not really free floating. But I'm going to go with that. So here, we can put this back on zero because we haven't bumped that settings 